Ian Lockhead. Lockheed, sorry. Head? Head, Lockhead. Sorry, my, I'm, I've got the flu and it's come back worse this week than it was last week and I don't actually know why. Somebody suggested I might be run down. Um. <laughs> well, I don't have that excuse, um, but I am just getting over a cold. So, um, But thank you for this opportunity to uh, submit on the, on the town hall. And um, uh, I sh should just say I'm... Uh, Ian Lockhead and I'm submitting on behalf of Historic Places Canterbury uh, and Keep Our Town Hall. And I, I'm pleased Don went before me because what I'm going to say follows on from his uh, final comments. Uh, what I want to emphasise is that you are not making a decision on just another damaged building. This is a building of not just local importance, not just national importance, but absolutely of international significance. And that's mainly what I want to address uh, this morning. Uh, I'm sure you all know that the Town Hall is one of the most significant heritage buildings remaining in the city. Uh, it's a Group 1 uh, listed heritage building in the city plan. Uh, and it's an outstanding example uh, of a really important period in New Zealand's architectural history, sometimes referred to as the Christchurch School. Uh, as a heritage listing authority under the RMA, uh, the City Council has a responsibility to protect its own heritage buildings and to set an example to other building owners. Buildings such as the Town Hall result from the coming together of many different factors. In this case, uh, a long-standing community desire for a civic space that would place Christchurch on a par with Auckland, Wellington and Dunedin. A city council which recognised that the time was right in the 1960s to embark on such a project. A moment in architectural history when Christchurch had emerged as the leading centre for architectural innovation in New Zealand. The development of a brief that was specific enough to be useful, but broad enough to allow for creativity. <laughs> The commissioning, through one of the largest architectural competitions in New Zealand's history, of a design team with the skills to produce an outstanding building. Uh, the key members of that team were, as you've already heard, Sir Harold Marshall, uh, Sir Miles Warren and Morris Marnie. And I know Morris is here uh, today um, and Sir Miles is coming, I believe. Uh, and Sir Harold uh, came and presented uh, to the City Council in August of 2012. In Charles Lunny, there was a contractor who was able to realise a brilliant design. And on top of that, there was the total commitment of the people of Christchurch, which resulted in 20% of the cost of the building being met by the public, not through rates, but through public mm. contributions. And I think that's a really important factor. This really is our building. Such a propitious combination of key factors rarely occurs when a major building uh, is commissioned and it can't be replicated at will. And I think it's also important to remember that the Town Hall is both a performance venue and our most important civic space. When used for university graduations, for school prize givings, for mass school concerts of the kinds we've just heard about, Christmas concerts and other celebratory events, it is barely big enough and the whole venue is used. And I'll come back to that point in a moment. In another context, I've described the Town Hall as our public living room, the space where we come together to mark the significant moments in our collective life as a city. As a complex, the Town Hall is greater than the sum of its parts. The clarity of the planning, the spatial complexity of the multi-level circulation areas, the connection with the Avon River and Victoria Square all make an experience, uh, the, the experience of visiting the Town Hall exceptional. And I think you only have to go to um, the likes of the Victoria State Theatre in Melbourne or the uh, QPAC, the Performing Arts Centre in Brisbane to realise just how skillful the planning of the Christchurch Hall is. Because you always know where you are. In both those Australian venues, 
it can be really baffling experience to negotiate your way around through the foyers and or even just to get out of the building at the end of a concert. The loss of any part of an architectural complex where all the parts are as closely integrated as they are in the town hall would be seriously detrimental to the whole. And I can't speak for the University of Canterbury, but I've been a member of academic staff for over 30 years and attended many graduations in the town hall. And I can confirm, uh, and this really uh, relates to the, point, the question that was asked earlier, that during graduations, the university makes use of the entire complex. Uh, graduations in the CBS arena are, in comparison, uh, pretty lacklustre affairs. Uh, there's no interior space for marshalling graduates. Uh, so if it's raining, it's a real problem. Uh, so just getting the, the, the graduates um, or the graduands uh, in their sequence before the event is a problem. And afterwards, there is constricted space for socialising with graduates and their families. In the town hall, the James Hay Theatre allows us to um, marshal the students, get them uh, in the right order to file into the town hall. Uh, and uh, the range of function rooms, uh, the limes room uh, and so on, the various foyer spaces, makes it possible for various groups to go to designated areas so that the staff know where their graduates will be, so you can socialise with them and meet their family. Uh, and that's a really important part of that graduation experience that just doesn't happen in the arena. So restoration in part uh, is not a viable option. In his submission to the Council on the 22nd, 22nd of November 2012, Sir Harold Marshall stated, uh, as a professor of architecture for some 25 years, I have no hesitation in declaring that the Christchurch Town Hall bu building as a whole is the finest piece of architecture built in New Zealand in the latter half of the 20th century. Its fitness for purpose, the elegance with which it is crafted, handrails, doors, detailing, structure and materials, and the clarity with which it was conceived all contribute to the whole, and as a whole it must remain. This is a true taonga. Speaking of the acoustic design of the hall, Sir Harold explained why this building is unique, and I'm quoting again from Sir Harold's submission. There are aspects of the acoustical design of the auditorium which are unique and which will never be repeated, and perhaps I know these better than anyone else. The design was, uh, or the design was acoustically unique in the following ways. When it was designed, acoustical knowledge was in flux. Most of the metrics in use today were invented after this hall was designed. Reverberation time alone was then measured. The town hall competition provided the necessity and opportunity for the invention of a new design paradigm, the importance of lateral reflected sound. It was the first building designed specifically to ensure the audibility of lateral reflected sound at all seats. To do this, the building broke new ground formally. It was entirely without precedent in the late 60s. It was the first concert hall to make computer prediction of echo and the audibility of lateral sound. Uh, and Sir Harold pointed out that there is a connection with the space race because the computer analysis was done on a former NASA computer at the University of Western Australia. And he also emphasised, and it was here, not in Europe or America. It is representative of the willingness of New Zealanders to be, col to be collaborative across disciplines in exploring a new paradigm. What Sir Harold explained so clearly has been validated by other authorities in the field of acoustics. Professor Trevor Cox of the University of Salford in the UK, writing in The Guardian in March of this year, rated the Christchurch Town Hall as among the 10 of the world's best concert halls. Our town hall is described by Cox 
one of the UK's leading acousticians, as being revolutionary in its design. Of the other nine concert halls on his list, six are in Europe, one is in Japan, one is in the United States, one is in Brazil, and only one, the Christchurch Hall, is in Australasia. The Sydney Opera House, for all its spectacular exterior, doesn't figure. Following the opening of the new Philharmonic Hall in Paris in January of this year, Cox identified two concert halls as the most important precedents for that prestigious Parisian hall. The first is the Berlin Philharmonic Hall, designed by Hans Schroon and completed in 1963, a world famous building and the home of the celebrated Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. The second precedent for the Paris Hall was the Christchurch Town Hall. The Paris Hall was designed by the famous French architect Jean Nouvel in conjunction with Marshall Day Acoustics, the international consultancy founded by Sir Harold Marshall. Uh, and it is being recognised as, and I quote again from the Guardian's music critic, uh, one of the most dynamic and exciting places to listen to orchestral music in the world. Uh, and it takes a lot to um, impress hard-bitten London music critics. The design of the new Paris Concert Hall would not have been possible without the revolution that occurred in Christchurch between 1966 and 1972. The sound quality of the Paris Hall has been described by that same critic as pretty stunning, having a combination of dazzling clarity and generous depth across the full range of orchestral sonorities. These very qualities, clarity of sound within a warm reverberant acoustic, are what dis distinguish the Christchurch Auditorium. The true significance of the Christchurch Town Hall has scarcely been recognised in New Zealand because we habitually expect innovations in architecture to originate from other parts of the world. As Sir Harold has explained, it was our ability to innovate without being constrained by received ideas, uh, you could say our ability to think laterally, that made the revolution of the Christchurch Town Hall possible. With imaginative promotion, the, new, u, the unique qualities of our town hall could bring visitors to Christchurch from around the world. But most importantly, we should restore it for ourselves. It is our taonga, and we must treasure it. And just to amplify that point about um, imaginative promotion, you know, if we've got one of the world's 10 best concert halls, why wouldn't we try and bring the world's 10 best orchestras to Christchurch in the way that um, QPAC in Brisbane has been bringing the world's best dance companies to their venue and promoting tourism in Brisbane. And they have uh, targets for enormous income coming from that. You know, why wouldn't we invite the, uh, the Paris Orchestra to Christchurch for a week to perform, uh, to give chamber concerts in a reconfigured James Hay um, theatre, uh, and it would, without doubt, bring people from all parts of New Zealand uh, and from Australia as well. I heard the Hamburg Philharmonic in um, Brisbane. The people I was sitting next to uh, were from Melbourne. They had flown uh, a similar distance from Melbourne to Brisbane as it is from Melbourne to Christchurch. For these uh, reasons, um, our groups fully support the recommendation before Council of full repair and restoration of the Town Hall to 100% of the NBS. Thank you. We really haven't got time for questions, but um, I'm kind of reluctant to, to, to let the opportunity of you know, having um, your esteemed self in front of us to ask a couple of questions. Um, one of them relates to um, the, the comment that was made before about the donut having to go in to actually re remedy the defect in the original design. Do you want to comment on when that happened and, and why that was necessary? Well, I think it's exactly as, as Don explained. There was a, there was a, a problem uh, in terms of the 
performers being able to hear mm. one another. And Which is kind of critical for a yeah, and that and that was remedied. But what you also so have when to... When was it remedied? Oh, sorry, I don't know the answer. Uh, relatively early on. I mean, Don... Yeah. Within about six months. Within about six months. Right, yeah. okay. What, what I think you, you have to remember was that this hall was going where no other hall had gone before. Yeah. Uh, and so, inevitably, they were tweaking things. And it, it's also acknowledged that every concert hall, with all the sophisticated computer analysis that happens now, is tweaked because acoustics is not something you can predict with absolute precision. So tweaking concert halls is the norm. Yeah. And the, the other thing, and because I know that others are going to rely on it and our own report says it, but we received a submission during the long-term plan which highlighted that the Guardian article with, in terms of the reference to 10 of the world's best concert halls was the sub-editor's version of what was published. What was actually published was um, Trevor Cox picking 10 landmark concert halls around the world where brilliant design means brilliant sound. So it, it, it didn't actually categorise them as the 10 of the world's best concert halls. They were landmark halls um, where he was asked to comment on design and sound. So I, I just, sub-editors yeah. have a habit of looking at a way and um, I mean, if you were if you were writing a if you were writing an article or an item for a for a journal, you couldn't rely on a sub editor's version of what the article was about as a source, a valid source for your assertion that it's one of the ten of the world's best concert halls. It was just a comment that was made by a submitter, and they referenced it, which we've now checked. No, I, I mean I was very careful to say that um, what he said was that this was among. Ten of the best. No, he said that it was. He was asking. No, what I'm, I'm saying, what I was saying, in my submission. That yeah. I, 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 but. No, no, but he wasn't asked to pick the best. He was asked to pick ten landmark concert halls. Yes, and yeah. and and. And la they're landmark and, and, for different reasons, and your reason is that it's a landmark because it's the first of its kind in the world. Yes, it, it, it is a landmark, but also the reason it is a landmark is because it, you know, if it had been the first of its kind of in the world and it was a dud, yeah, it wouldn't be a landmark. Yeah. But it was the first of its kind and it worked brilliantly and it changed the way everybody thought about concert hall design from then onwards. It changed the paradigm. Mm. And as I said in my submission, the Paris Wall couldn't have evolved in the way that it did, were it not for the design innovations of the Christchurch Town Hall. So... But not every subsequent concert hall has followed that design. No, and... And uh, he, he made the com comment around the music... Um, no, I can't even read that because my, my eyesight's so bad. Um, the mu music, Verein uh, and Vienna. Yes. Um, um, making the point that it's shaped like a shoebox, yeah, tall, no. long and narrow. Uh, the acoustics in that hall are rated as one of the best, if not the best, in the world. Absolutely, but it has the problem that Don alluded to mm. that of not the people that intimacy. It doesn't have the intimacy, mm. and you know I, that's something that we we value in our experience of musical events, the the, the sense of engagement. So to be able to have both that. Mm and an outstanding acoustic, is an extraordinary achievement. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not to say that shoebox format concert halls don't work, mm. because they, they, they tend to. Uh, there are good and bad examples of that. Uh, but one of the points that Sir Harold made, and I think it's a very valid, valid one, it was the flexibility of thinking of an architectural team and an acoustic designer who had a radically new theory that made it possible for the paradigm to be reshaped here, because if you were trying to do that in Austria, you wouldn't have had a show, because the Musikverein model was so powerful. It was powerful in the United States. 
well into the 1970s. Uh, and if you take, for example, Avery Fisher Hall, which is more or less contemporaneous with the Christchurch Town Hall. This is the concert hall in Lincoln Centre in New York. Mm. They are now, I think, on their third iteration of trying to get the acoustics right. Mm. You know, we had to put a donut above the stage. Mm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just think it's really yeah. important that we... Um, I mean, I made a comment on radio the other day that I hadn't read any of the paperwork. Now I have. So, um, but I just... I, I almost you know, fell into a reverie at the point that you said the development of a brief that was specific enough to be useful but broad enough to allow for creativity. And I thought, imagine if that's how we were rebuilding our city. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you very, very much. Okay.